Hey guys, and welcome back to Nomi Factory. Last episode, we set up a farm for rubber and canola. We also set up our cobble works here to give us many, many useful resources. We expanded DML to automate loot fabrication. And we also set up our oil drilling rig, something we'll be using today. As I mentioned last episode, I did also add four more numismatic dynamos to increase our power generation. And I cleaned up some of the area here around the terminals. The sugarcane farm has been moved next to the farming station over there. So yeah, the plan for today is to go for the next tier of circuit, which requires epoxy. Epoxy is one of the most involved processes in Nomi Factory, and I don't know if we can get there today. What do you guys think? Before we go anywhere near epoxy, we are going to fix stainless steel to begin with, so we already have it passive in this blast furnace. We'll need stainless steel to build some HV machines, which we need in order to make epoxy. The only problem with this blast furnace is we don't have the stainless steel dust automated. So instead of directly pulling stainless steel from our AE system, which we are manually crafting up until this point, we're going to add a separate interface and request manganese, nickel dust, iron dust, and also chrome. Which you can see we are actually completely out of, we'll get to that in a second. So if we set the recipe here in the mechanical crafter, I believe it does automatically pull from the interface so long as all the items are available. So how are we going to go about getting these input items, especially at the start of the game here? There are basically only three ways to get chrome dust, and the only way really available for us right now is to electrolyze ruby dust. Ruby is not something that we can get from DML, however we can buy it with Nomi pennies. And since we're buying it, we want to maximize our output of rubies. So I've went ahead and built this system right here. It's a very, very basic ore processing system and something not meant to last us throughout the game, just in the early game here to get us enough chrome. But this we can also use for nickel and manganese, two other things we need for stainless steel. Basically any other ore we want to put through this thing. I think I'll explain how this works at the end of the episode, but uh, for now, all we need to know is this gives us ruby dust, which we are then gonna send through our electrolyzer here and this will give us the chrome dust that we need. Oh yeah, this does also give us oxygen, which we're just gonna trash here. There is also the iron dust, but we're just gonna batch craft it at this stage. I've got an idea for how we're gonna handle that sort of stuff. But at this stage, it's easy enough just to throw a full inventory of iron in the macerator. And this will allow many, many hours of stainless steel processing. All right, so let's begin this long journey for epoxy. First of all, we're gonna load up this ore processing system with a lot of ruby ore. We will also top up our salt supply as well. Yeah, like 10 stacks of salt ore. And we'll also throw in some pyrolusite for manganese. Now this will probably take like 10 hours to process because this is MV and these machines are slow, which is why I wanted to get this done early. So yeah, as I mentioned last episode, there are two routes for epoxy, either the naphtha route or the bisphenol A route. We are gonna be going for the bisphenol A route. However, either way, I think it does require a distillation tower. The distillation tower is something that we skipped over when making ethylene. However, I think we can no longer skip this process. We are required to make this distillation tower. Thankfully though, we have built up enough stainless steel, I think. Let's find out, I guess. Ah yeah, we need tier three circuits, which I think I've already crafted. Uh-huh. Distillation tower number one constructed, and we've got this running on an HV line here, so I've extended out the RF connection via the N-Steel conduits. This is going into a 16x HV CEF, and then into 16x Vibrant Alloy cable, which is the lossless cable at HV. So the way that this tower works is we give it oil, we give it power, and it will give us sulfuric heavy fuel, sulfuric light fuel, sulfuric naphtha, and sulfuric gas. Almost all of those gases will be useful for us at some stage. Anyways, to get the oil over there, we're going to use a fluid storage bus on our quantum tank, partition this for oil, and this will be high priority. Then we can make a fluid interface. I don't know if I have, I don't have one. Yeah, the fluid interface will be placed uh, probably here. So fluid input for this has to be bottom middle in this game. I don't think we can place it anywhere like we can in GTNH. Anyways, we can run some conduit underneath, extract on brown, and we'll set a fluid filter insert for oil and also request it here in the fluid interface. All right, of course has to be plugged in. <laughs> that happens way too often. Does it turn on? Oil? There we go. <laughs> We're just in our oil. So with these byproducts, this is sulfuric versions. Any second now. Yep, all of these outputs are sulfuric versions and we have to desulfurize these in a chemical reactor with hydrogen. And this will give us the regular heavy fuel, for example. 
there's no alternative use for the sulfuric versions of these liquids. So we might as well immediately chemical react these. I think we'll do this step at MV though. So for that we will need a transformer. And we'll put a small buffer out the output of the distillation towers. And then we can fluid conduit that into chemical reactors. And we'll set fluid filters for each one. So we've got the fluids going into the chemical reactors. We also need to get some hydrogen in here. And you may or may not remember, we are producing hydrogen in a couple of places when we're making polyethylene. Is it this drum here? No, that's hydrochloric acid. Ah, it's right here is the hydrogen. And this we want on low priority storage, since we want this to be used first, and this is not a primary producer of hydrogen. So that allows us to put the hydrogen into this system and desulfurize all of these fuels, which do also give us hydrogen sulfide. All of the hydrogen sulfide comes out of the chemical reactors and into an electrolyzer, which we can electrolyze for sulfur just as a byproduct. This is just on a void upgraded drawer. And then the hydrogen goes down and buffered in the steel drum, which is then extracted and round robin back into the chemical reactors here. And once we desulfurize all of this fuel, the outputs are stored in all of these quantum tanks. I'm not sure if this is going to be sufficient long term. We may have to switch to a storage subnet, but this is how we're going to store these fluids for now. Let's also get the quest. Refinery gas, naphtha, light and heavy fuel, and the hydrogen sulfide. Oh, that was almost the right amount of casings there. But we had extra, which is better than not enough, right? <laughs> so we built our second distillation tower here. So just so you guys know where we're going with this, if we check the recipe for epoxy resin, this is basically split into three parts. The bisphenol A, the sodium hydroxide, and the epichlorohydrin. We'll ignore the bisphenol A for now. The epichlorohydrin though also has two routes you can go. Either with glycerol, which is from seed oil or basically biodiesel. And that is the reason I planted canola, that was the original plan, was to do the biodiesel route. Instead, we're going to do the bottom recipe here, which is sodium hydroxide dust, hypochlorous acid and allyl chloride. The thing is, to make the allyl chloride, we need propene. But propene is one of the things that we can get from our oil distillation. And we are going to run the steam cracked naphtha recipe right here, which can give us all of these other byproducts. Which is the reason why this distillation tower is so large. So as you saw, naphtha is one of the recipes that we are getting out of the first distillation tower from oil. We do have to steam crack this though. We'll need a fluid heater. I think again we'll do this at MV. So transformer from HV to MV. And then we'll have a chemical reactor and a fluid heater here. I think we'll have to interface with all these machines below since we have an output hatch here we can't block. So we want to grab the naphtha, which is this one here. This is a slightly spaghetti wiring, but <laughs> I think I'll swap it out for interfaces when we can afford that. And we'll put an end of war underneath the fluid heater to give it water. I think we should be able to just automatically output from the reservoir. And I think it's configuration 0 for this. No, configuration 1. Yes, we're getting steam from this, which we want to send into the chemical reactor. That should steam crack our naphtha. Perfect, and then we just have to send this into the distillation tower. And again, the input for this is on the bottom center. There is only one version of the steam crack that you can do in this. There's no lightly or severely, I think it is, severely steam crack that you get in GTNH. So now I think this thing should have turned on. Perfect. And we have the mega distillation tower. So we get some byproducts out of this, which we'll be processing later on. The first of which being tiny piles of carbon dust which uh, I don't think have any use as tiny piles, so we ideally want to package these into regular carbon, and then we'll store that product, rather than storing the tiny dusts. So again, we'll do transformer down to MV, since we can't really afford the HV machines right now. That's going to go straight into a packager, into a drawer. We'll give this a void upgrade, and max storage upgrades as well. Alright, so that's the carbon taken care of. Now we've got all of these fluids. Heavy fuel, light fuel, toluene, benzene, butene, butadiene, propane, propene, ethane, ethylene, and methane. Is it bad that I know all of those off by heart? I think I've played too much Greg Tech right now. Anyways, the propene is the one we set this up for. Truthfully, I haven't figured out how we're going to store and transport all of these fluids yet. So I'm going to put that off for a second. <laughs> and we'll set up the rest of this chain here. Inventory management, please. There's too many things we need. Alright, so for now we just have a fluid storage bus over there in the distillation tower. And that allows us to request a propene and we're going to mix this with chlorine. And this gives us the allyl chloride. 
along with some hydrochloric acid which is going to the right hand side and being buffered here. I think we will have to trash excess on hydrochloric acid but I'm going to wait on that here. Anyways again we want to buffer allyl chloride in its own drawer. That's a funny looking drawer. <laughs> no we will need a fluid filler on this and this way it will only pull the allyl chloride from the machine into this drum. Alright so from here we have to combine this with hypochlorous acid which is not the same as hydrochloric acid and to get this we mix chlorine plus water. There is optionally mercury we can add to this as well to give slightly more yield. It makes it 1 to 1 with chlorine rather than 2 to 1. And I remember we did do it last run and it seemed to work out quite well since chlorine is in such high demand and it's not easy to get either. We, we want to keep all the chlorine we can get. Oh that's right, we also get ruby dust from redstone electrolysis. And redstone electrolysis is how we get our mercury. We're also getting silicon and pyrite out of this. All of which are being stored in the drawer, going into the drawer controller. So the mercury we get out of this electrolyzer, taken out on purple, buffered in this drum, taken out on brown, sent into this chemical reactor where it gets mixed with chlorine and water. The water we get from below, and the chlorine we are taking from the same interface that we are requesting it for this chemical reactor. It's just on the same conduit network and we add it to the filler here. So this gives us the hypochlorous acid which is then buffered in the tank above, sent into the next chemical reactor where it gets mixed with sodium hydroxide dust and uh, allyl chloride. The sodium hydroxide dust is made, I think it's part of salt water electrolysis, but we have it in this drum here, we set this up last episode. And then all of these combine together for some more salt water, buffered here, and epichlorohydrin. Easy. I hope you followed all that. <laughs> now I know that it can get quite a lot of we mix this, then we mix this, then we mix this. But importantly, we are getting epichlorohydrin here, which is half of epoxy resin. So a couple of things, a couple of extra things to note with this system. I think we do want to sort out these drawers. We want to void the pyrite dust, which is basically iron. We may or may not set up processing for that in the future, but iron is basically free for us. There's also silicon, which we're getting elsewhere. We'll also void upgrade this. The rubies, we are just going to max upgrade. We'll leave space for a void upgrade, but... Uh, yeah, we'll address this if it becomes an issue. I don't think it's going to fill up though. And we may as well upgrade the other drawers as well. Doesn't hurt. The other thing is we have to deal with salt water because this drum is going to fill up and it's going to backstuff the system. Meaning that we can't create any more epichlorohydrin. So to resolve that, I think we put a fluid storage bus on the steel drum. This will set to negative priority since we want it to be used first. And where we have this electrolyzer, which is already doing salt water, it looks like we were using conduit before. Yeah, we'll have to change this up. Hold on. Yeah, we'll keep the item conduit for the sodium hydroxide dust, which goes to the drawer below. However, we are also going to add another fluid storage bus to this. This one will be on higher priority. And then we'll use a conduit to insert instead. We can disconnect these ones. Request the salt water. So what this will do is pull it from the AE system rather than from the drum directly. And ensure that we prioritize this one, because this one is on lower priority than this drum here. And hopefully that is going to resolve our issues here. We'll have to keep an eye on that specific thing. So yeah, we're halfway there. It looks like for whatever reason we didn't get the quest though. Now nah, we'll worry about the quest later. <laughs> We've still got a lot of machines to set up here. So epichlorohydrin then has to be combined with bisphenol A. And this is going to have some interesting challenges associated with it. We are going to need one more loot fabricator. Oh, I guess we'll have to start a new row here. I guess this one will go here. Luke's cable. Level emitter. Item conduit. Extract blue. So we're going to add skeleton matter to this and we want to select bones. We're already doing skeleton for tin over here. The level emitter though I think we'll set quite low at just probably 200. We don't really need to buffer more than 200 bones. And we'll add the storage monitor. Make sure to give it a space on our drawer wall. I guess it can go here. So yeah, to make bisphenol A one of the things we need is acetone. We'll get back to these other fluids in a second. The acetone we can get from fluid heat and dissolved calcium acetate. And this we can make from calcium which we can I think electrolyze bones. Or is it centrifuge? Yeah, that's what it is. It's centrifuge and bone meal that can give us calcium. Okay, so we got the bones. We're going to need, first of all, a macerator, as well as a centrifuge. And we're going to make use of this drawer network and connect these up together. So drawer here, drawer here. We'll need an interface to supply the bones. This is probably going to get moved, but we'll place it here for now just to get the system running. Plug this in. All right, so we're making bone meal. This is going to go to the right-hand side. Then we'll use a conveyor on the machine Set this to import, which should centrifuge it all into calcium dust. This will send its constants to the left. Alright, so from here we need to mix with acetic acid and oxygen. 
the oxygen we should have from our furnace set up last episode. However, the acetic acid, we are going to use oxygen and ethylene. We are making ethylene as part of polyethylene, but we are stretched really, really thin on ethylene, especially since it's shared with PVC. However, if you were paying attention earlier on, we, <laughs> we are also making it out of this distillation tower somewhere. Yes, it's this tank right here. We're going to fluid storage bust this. Oh man, immediately it's gone from here. <laughs> the drum is empty. So that will be distributed between polyethylene, PVC, and it should also end up in this interface. Yeah, it's already in the machine here. We just need to add integrated circuit 2. And we're making acetic acid. Awesome. This stuff we definitely do want to buffer since it's... I know it's used elsewhere as well. Steel drum. Then we mix the acetic acid with more oxygen and our calcium here. We just need to set some filters. Instead of taking the calcium directly from the drawer though, we are going to ask for it in this interface, which means we'll need some drawer trim to connect the drawer networks together. And this just follows the same principle as we had with the fluids. It means that any excess that we have in our drives or elsewhere will be, uh, will be accessible also by this interface. And this stuff should be used last. The storage bus on here will be high priority. Uh, wait, are we not getting calcium? I did set the filler here, right? Yes. Oh, I didn't actually put the storage bus on. <laughs> There you go. High priority. Oh no, HV chemical reactor. Oh, this wasn't supposed to happen. <laughs> oh, I don't think we have any circuits for this either. Nope, we're going to have to make more circuits. Alright, we got there in the end. We got our first HV chemical reactor. That is then fluid heated into acetone, buffered in the drum. And then we're sending the acetone along with hydrochloric acid, which is also coming from this fluid interface. The uh, hydrochloric acid we're making as a byproduct of PVC, I think, over here. So the last part we need for bisphenol A, I think this is bisphenol A, right? There's too many chemical reactions here. But yeah, we need also phenol here. You may remember that we do have this pyrolyze oven here that we set up for phenol. This was used in the original circuit boards that we made for tier 1 and 2s. However, this is not fully automated yet. So I think what we do here is actually move it out off of this LV line. I think it still is actually running at LV. Yeah, that's an LV energy hatch on the back there. I think the whole LV line here will be getting removed at some point. So I kind of want to remove everything from here that's going to be more or less semi-permanent. And I guess this fluid heater is, is only LV. We'll need an MV1 to put on that line. Unless we use a transformer or something, but I think this guy's going to go right around here. Yeah. So we need to sort out the inputs for this. We're going to run the same recipe as we done before with coal and steam, which will give us coke and phenol. This does eat quite a bit of coal, so we may look into another solution for phenol in the future. Well, uh, we'll have to see how this plays out, basically. So we have the fluid output hatch. This is where the phenol buffer is going to go. Interface for the coal. Will this input bus automatically pull from the interface? I think it should, right? Let's find out. It does! Awesome! Fluid heater is below, we're just taking from the same reservoir as this chemical reactor here for clay. I hope that doesn't starve it for the for the water, since I know that was struggling before. Aha! Now we're running! Perfect! And remember, the coal we get from, I think it's creeper models from DML. It's just a question of if it can keep up with the, the amount that our pyrolyzed oven is going to use. Let's lock the coke drawer here, we've got a void upgrade on this as well. I think all we need now is another fluid storage bus. We've used a lot of these today. <laughs> Oh, we're out of pumps. We're out of bronze. I knew this would happen at some point. Yeah, fluid storage bus on the phenol. This is going to be high priority. And we can request it in this fluid interface. Add it to this filler, and I think we should have bisphenol A. Correct? Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> so we get diluted hydrochloric acid. We want to buffer that here and then distill that, which will give us regular hydrochloric acid back. And that we can reuse in one of these chemical reactors somewhere. We do have to make sure that it's a pump on the tank to be able to set the filter. Another fluid storage bus on the hydrochloric acid buffer. Low priority for this. And we'll trash the excess here. So finally, the very last step is to put bisphenol A and epichlorohydrin together. I've got another MV chemical reactor for that. I guess we can do it here. Yes, almost there. I think we're still just missing sodium hydroxide dust. Just have to add it to this interface. Set the filter here. Okay, do we have it? Epoxy resin? Epoxy resin. 
Oh my goodness, this took a while. And salt water. I guess we're going to have to uh, send the salt water back to the system here as well. It looks like this electrolyzer is probably going to need to be upgraded to HV. But we can run HV machines off this MV line. You may have noticed that I did have to add a, a new CEF here because we added that HV chemical reactor down the end. But yeah, as long as you give enough amps to your machines, then uh, you can run higher tier machines on lower tier cable. Just not the other way around, otherwise you get fire. <laughs> Alright, so we do have a small amount of epoxy resin here. The thing we are bottlenecked by is, I think, propene and ethylene, because uh, our distillation tower over there is backed up. And some of these input hatches are full, which causes this to stop and not process anymore. Yeah, I think it's the benzene we're full on, which is useful, but for us, we can make styrene butadiene rubber with this. I think I've decided that we will do a fluid subnet to store all the fluids out of the distillation tower. That's not something we done last run, but I think it's going to work well for us in this case. Anyways, we are just here to pick up some lipidolite. Something we should have done a very, very long time ago is start leveling a thermal data model. So I know for a fact, whenever we start nuclear craft and we get into some reactors, we are absolutely going to need the thermal pristine elemental matter, which we can fabricate into blitz rods, basalt rods, blizz rods, some other nice things in here as well, obsidian dust. All of it we are going to need at some point soon. However, to make this data model, we need either petrothium, cryothium, or aerothium dust. And all of these, at least until you have the first data model, need to be made in the chemical reactor with elemental reduction fluid. So we first have to electrolyze lipidolite. That should give us fluorine, which we then combine with hydrogen. Now, where do we get hydrogen? I think here. Yeah, fluorine plus hydrogen gives us hydrofluoric acid. Something that we do have to automate soon. Then we need to mix this with pulsating dust, which is right here. And this should be the reduction fluid. Nice. And a quest. I think we can react with some coal dust. And we get basalt powder. And this is what we can use for the data model. And get our quest. Yeah, so I think we'll start off just leveling four of these things right off the bat. And no doubt it's probably been enough time for a lot of these guys to have fully leveled to self-aware. So that means that it's time to switch these out again for some new data models to get them leveled. We are going to need probably 10 times the amount of simulation chambers we have right here. So I just exchanged some of the ones we already had, took out some of the self-aware Enderman and Shulker, and threw in some basic ones. We do have to make sure we give a drawer for the pristines for thermal though, since it is a new resource. Although I don't think we'll add the loot fabricators yet, we'll keep it all as pristines. So let's see about unclogging this distillation tower here and sorting out some fluid storage for all of these outputs. This isn't strictly necessary, but I'm going to put a drum on the output of each of these output hatches. And we are going to do 1k fluid storage disks. I think 1k is going to be absolutely plenty. We do, however, have to partition these so that there's only ever one fluid allowed in each of the cells. So for example, the first one here is heavy fuel. We can just lock this in the cell workbench. To make it easy on ourselves, we're also going to name this heavy fuel. So we'll want to make sure we disconnect this from the main network. We don't want this on the same network as all the other fluids. So then we'll need our drive bay. Actually, I think we'll probably need two, right? Since there is 11 fluids and each bay can only hold 10 drives. And methane should be the last one we need to partition. Okay, so at this point, we've got a drive for each fluid. We need to give this little subnet power and also connect it up to our main network here. So in order to do that, we can place a fluid interface which will belong to the subnet. We'll put a fluid storage bus on, which will belong to the main network. This will set on high priority, and we absolutely want extract only on this. So basically what this is doing is our main network, whenever we request fluids in the fluid interface, if one of those fluids happens to be one of these that belong in the drives, it is able to extract it, but it's never able to insert anything in here. And then to give it power, we can use a quartz fiber, which does not transmit channels, only power. Then we can run up some fluid conduit up these drums. And we'll put all of these on extract blue. We'll use the conduit probe. No conduit montage here. <laughs> and these we can all just insert straight into this fluid interface. Right? Yeah, I think so. And if we place a storage monitor, we should see all the fluids going up. So that's effectively unblocked our distillation tower here. I don't know what exactly we're bottlenecked by now. I think we're probably just waiting on this guy here making more naphtha. It does take quite a bit for it to actually desulfurize. It's possible for us to also void excess on these if we were to place a trash can and have a fluid storage bus on this with low priority. However, I think we're going to hold off on that and just see how our, uh, how our fluid situation is looking. Yeah, I think we'll hold off on the trash can. I want to avoid doing that as much as possible. 
And with that, I think it's also wrap up point for this episode. We did actually manage to get epoxy this time, although no quest since we are locked by, I don't know, something silly over here. <laughs> but we have to hold aloe chloride. And apparently we also need to get biodiesel to unlock the quest. Ugh. The next stage for the epoxy though is to fluid solidify it into sheets. And then these we can use in the chemical reactor for epoxy circuit boards. And this is used in the final tier 2s. And also the cheaper tier 3s, which can allow us to make the HV machines much, much easier than we already have. One final thing on this ore processing system. Just in case you were curious, we have ore input here. And then conveyor modules on all of these machines, on all sides of these machines. And the only place where it changes is here with the robot arms. Which are on supply exact mode, and this one is dust tiny. And this one here is dust small, so this effectively gives us small and tiny dusts, potentially. And that gets packaged and then put in the output chest here. Oh yeah, this thing is still going. It's backed up. <laughs> That's going to be a permanent state for this thing right here. But yeah, it's very simple actually once you understand it. These are ore dictionary fillers. Very, very useful items right here. Anyways, that is going to do us today. Thank you once again for watching, and I'll see you all soon for some more Nomi Factory.